Hey, how's it going? So, I recently was able to get my hands on an all-original pre-Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray. I am super excited about this. To me, Stingrays are probably the most classic bass design after the Fender Precision and Jazz, but I've never actually owned one. So lately I've been listening to a lot of the famous players of the original pre-EB Stingrays, like Bernard Edwards and Louis Johnson, as well as a current artist, Donnie Benet. If you haven't heard of Donnie Benet, I definitely recommend checking him out. Beyond the awesome post-disco image, the guy's actually an amazing bass player and uses an early 80s Stingray, just like this one, on a lot of his songs. So let's give a Donnie Benet bass line a shot and let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> Oh man, that sounds so good. That is the authentic, crisp, sizzly, scooped tone that Stingrays are known for. So cool. Only, what if I told you I was kind of messing with you there? Okay. <laughs> really, I thought this would be kind of a fun game. Let me explain. What you saw just now and heard was me playing this bass. But at a few spots, the audio switched over to this bass. This is a Squire that I picked up online. I uh, hacked it up and threw a Stingray-style pickup in there. But the key here is that I made sure to get a pickup that's a clone of the original pre-EB Stingrays. In this case, a Nordstrand MM4.2 with the correct Alnico magnets. And I made sure to mount it at exactly the same location as the Stingray. And to recreate the Stingray's onboard preamp, I just looked up the original Stingray circuit and built it on a breadboard. It's actually not that hard a circuit to build if you're familiar with guitar electronics. Point is, I really just wanted to do an experiment to see how close a totally different bass would sound to an authentic pre-Ernie Ball Stingray just by getting the electronics as close as possible. And maybe the same principle could be true for other basses, but it's hard to say without actually trying those out. So you be the judge. Let's listen to the same audio clip again. This time, see if you can hear where it transitions from one bass to the other and back again. <laughs> And finally, here's the same clip, but showing which bass is actually playing. Kind of cool, huh? So I thought that was an interesting comparison given that these are totally different bases and thought I'd share the results. And question to you, in the first clip, before I told you it was two bases, did you notice any change at all? And even if you did hear a difference, here's the big question. Did you really think, okay, that part is clearly a vintage Stingray, but ugh, that one sounds like some kind of cheap pack job. Now, I welcome all comments, and I try to keep my own opinion to a minimum, but personally, let's just say I was surprised. Because, like me, I bet at some point you thought, hmm, I wonder if I just match the pickups and electronics in that high-end bass and put it in a cheap bass? Would it at least sound the same? Well, at least just in this case, let me put it this way. Based on sound alone, there might be a slight difference, but these two basses are now so similar I myself honestly cannot tell which is which in a blind test. I did try it. Granted, your ears may definitely be better than mine, but I figured it was still worth sharing with you. And of course, they feel totally different to play. The necks feel fairly different, 
They're different woods. I think the stingray's ash based on wood grain, and I think this is basswood based on what I've read. In any case, the stingray is noticeably heavier. It's about 9.6 pounds, whereas the stingray here is only about 8.6 pounds. Now that's not to knock Music Man or stingrays. Let me just be clear, I actually really like both of these basses for different reasons, but I can see how many people would prefer one or the other. And overall, it's kind of nice to think that if you really prefer the feel of one particular bass, but the sound of another, you can probably get pretty close to the best of both worlds, maybe even really close, by making sure to match pickup type, pickup location, and controls, as long as the basses themselves are relatively similar. If you're trying to get a Hofner violin bass to sound like a Fodera, I'm guessing that may just never happen, <laughs> but who knows, it'd be cool to try. So, alright, fun part. I'm going to do a shootout of the various iterations that it took to get to this point. If you're looking to capture a Stingray sound, or you've wondered what a regular Stingray might sound like versus an all-passive one, you might find these different options really interesting. I'll give a quick explanation now, but feel free to skip straight to the shootout. Timestamps are in the description. Now, a couple of notes. I'm using brand new strings on all of the basses in these demos. All identical strings with one exception for this P bass that I'll mention in a sec. And I did a full setup on all of the basses in this demo to get everything as close as I possibly could, like neck relief, bridge height action, and distance from the pickups to the strings. And keep in mind, Stingrays come in two-band EQ and three-band EQ versions, and they sound significantly different because the circuit designs are quite a bit different. Now, lots of people love both, but the pre-Ernie Balls are all two-band, and that's what we're going for today. And we'll start the shootout with the Stingray, since that sound is the goal. Then we'll try to work our way from least similar to most similar, or at least that's the general idea. Second up, this 1973 precision bass. This will give us a completely different sound on purpose. We're even using flat wound strings just for this one. Next up, the five pickup bass I showed in a previous video. Now this has pickup coils in almost exactly the right positions, and they're set up in parallel. But it's the wrong type of pickup for a Stingray, and it has passive controls. Remember that a key part of the Stingray sound is the onboard preamp. Then the Squire, with the right type of pickup, but it's still passive. You'll notice that there's no onboard controls on this bass, so we'll hear it direct at first. If you're interested in what a Stingray sounds like without the preamp, meaning all passive, this is basically that. By the way, this is essentially what Joe Dart currently plays, passive pickup wired in parallel. So there's definitely nothing wrong with a passive Stingray, it's just not the standard. You know, we need to give this bass a name. I guess we'll call it the Squire Ray. That's incredibly clever. Then we'll add the active preamp to the mix. First, we'll use the exact standard two-band EQ Stingray preamp onto the five pickup bass to see if that makes the sound a little more accurate. Then we'll try the Squire Ray with a commercially available clone of the Stingray preamp. This is the Mojo Tone Music Man clone model. Now I'll just tell you, I traced the circuit and this is actually not an exact clone of the standard Stingray preamp. It's similar, but there are quite a few variations just to be clear. But does it give us the sound? you be the judge. So next, as a comparison, we'll use the circuit I built, which again is the standard Stingray preamp. Then lastly, one more pass with the Squire Ray, but why? You've probably noticed I keep using air quotes when I say the standard two-band preamp. Well, some pre-EB Stingrays had slightly different component values from the schematic that's floating around the internet, and surprise, surprise, as I found out, mine is one of them. Now, this is normal, and to be specific, the difference is that some of the capacitor values are slightly different from the standard. Here they are on the screen. But all the differences are within plus or minus 25% or less, so they're close. And here's the frequency response of both the standard preamp and my Stingray's preamp, just to compare. 
You can see the treble is just a bit higher on mine, given the same settings. So, to be totally scientific, I built that circuit too. And I did one more comparison so we'd have an exact electronics match. See if you can hear any difference. Lastly, we'll hear the Stingray one more time just to refresh our memories about what this is all supposed to sound like. One last note, most of these samples have the bass and treble control set at 75%. I tried lots of different settings, but that one was really the one that helped hear the character of the preamp, but without going overboard one way or the other. Still, just for some variety, I included one set at 50% bass, 50% treble. All right, one last look at the lineup, and here we go.
So there you go. Thanks for checking that out. If you're interested in trying some of these options yourself, here's my quick opinion. Beyond just this brief demo, based on my experience of actually playing both these bases in person, I would say that the Mojo Tone and the two preamp circuits that I built were all close enough to the Stingray that, again, personally, I don't think I would ever notice if they were swapped, especially in a mix. The one exception, the only significant difference I heard was that for the Mojo Tone preamp, the bass is quite a bit louder given the same settings, maybe a little bit less treble too. In person, it's probably more obvious than on YouTube because YouTube compresses the audio overall. But if you're interested in this preamp, you can just turn the bass down a little lower than you would on a stock Stingray. And that should get you very close to the two band Stingray sound for most typical settings. And the advantage here is that this is a ready-made product you can easily buy instead of building your own circuit. Maybe you're even looking for more bass headroom than stock. If so, this may be even better for you. I'm not affiliated with Mojo Tone, but just giving you my honest opinion. And I would say that the circuits that I built were in fact the closest matches. Interestingly, I actually got the impression that the standard preamp, quote unquote, was ever so slightly closer to the actual Stingray, even though it didn't quite match this particular Stingray's component values. I think this just goes to show that exact capacitor values in this preamp may not always make a huge difference to the actual sound. And remember, standard capacitors only have a plus or minus 20% accuracy anyway, so even two supposedly identical bases of any type may end up with significantly different sounds. Or maybe I had the knob at 74% in one sample and 76 on the other. I was trying my best, but it's actually really hard to get these knobs set exactly the same on different bases. For all intents and purposes, if it's that close, I think it's safe to say that the sound is essentially the same. Lastly, one cool thing I noticed, if you're thinking about adding a Stingray pickup to a P-Base, check out the spacing of this pickup. You'll see it fits right behind the P pickup. You can actually keep the P pickup where it is and just add the Stingray pickup right next to it. Now, technically, there's about a five millimeter or so overlap. So to make sure that mine was exactly right for this demonstration, I removed the P pickup and I did the routing so that the Stingray pickup is in exactly the right location to match the actual Stingray. You can also see that the bridge coil of a Stingray is positioned just about where the bridge pickup on a standard jazz bass is. It's a little farther off, but it's close. One thing I'll add though, if I weren't doing this particular experiment to see if I could get the same sound out of different brands, I probably would have just started with say a Sterling Subray 4 instead. They're also inexpensive like this Squire, but at least it's already routed for the right pickup. If you do that, one note, the main differences for the electronics are that the Ray 4 has a ceramic pickup magnet, not Alnico like this one. And it does have the two band preamp, but with a completely different circuit. Now most people agree it sounds really good and it sounds like a Stingray, but if you truly want the pre-EB sound, you're probably gonna want these modifications. Anyway, hope you found this experiment interesting. Thanks for letting me share it with you. Maybe this will give you some good input if you're looking to capture that early Stingray sound, or even adding pickups to any bass. Thanks for watching, happy playing.